Once you've gone about splitting your story, the artistic side of you is now on call. The first step here is to storyboard the story. This is an important process because it gives you a good idea of page structure, what images you want to prompt and so on and so forth. The prompts you need for the art generator, the ideas behind them come up at this stage. You also kind of get an idea of the size of your book. Um, some very important points about size of the book. Sizes of the books are very important to note because when you're publishing a physical book, like a paperback, the size is not the size. You have to add some extra margins, extra safe area, extra bleed area, and so on and so forth. I have it all detailed in my blog post and attach some good videos about how to pick the trim size you want, the size of the book you want, and so on and so forth. Here I show you an example of one of my storyboards. As you can see, there are lots of edit to the page structure and how it needs to be laid out. Storyboarding is also where you can create a rough sketch of what you want illustrated. Now, in the past, this would have been a challenging step for people that have a tough time illustrating or sketching. Not anymore. You can just write in text what you want a sketch to look like and then use that in the image prompters to either sketch it out or fully illustrate it for you. Here is my storyboard for one of my books. As you can see, I've used a lot of text to define what I want, and I'm going to use that in the image generator to get initial starter sketches or starter illustrations. Now, once you are done storyboarding, the next step is to start illustrating. With the help of image prompters, now, this is the toughest part of the process. Before we get started, let me do my rant on this subject. Image prompters or text to image generators are the most inconsistent of all the generative AI tools out there. No matter how good your prompting is, they have major drawbacks. Some of these are the limited choices of stock art, the lack of color and detail, the inconsistent results they generate, and their inability to provide any sort of coherent results from one prompt to another. So getting a very consistent style for your book gets really difficult. And that's where this whole process drove me crazy. They also do not do well with faces. So if you have any ideas that involve faces, you will have to like pick up a lot of the slack yourself. Now, I have experiences in both ends because both my books, one of them did not contain faces and the other one did. So I understood the differentiators between them. The above drawback is important to understand because this determines your art style and the kind of output you're willing to produce and accept. This wasn't a big deal for me personally since I have the ability to take a sketch and modify it and make my own illustration, but I can see how this can be a stumbling block for many people. I would recommend to these folks to take up additional help from Upwork or Fiverr to finish or to fine tune the artwork. See an example below of where I use sketchbook tool or app to further enhance and fine tune my illustrations. As you can see, I am taking an original initial sketch and working around it, building it, cropping it, maybe even changing it, changing the structure of the skeletal movements, etc., and so on and so on. I also wanted to show you some important points on how these images can be edited on your own screens. You can use lots of tools like Photoshop, etc. For people having an iPad and Apple products, uh, Procreate is a very popular tool that you can take some of these illustrations and make modifications on. For people on Android and PC, Sketchbook by Autodesk is a very fine tool for this experience. Make sure you use layers where you can use the original picture in the first layer and use that to sketch out the changes you want in the second layer. Make it opaque in the first layer and you should be able to get a slight trace of the first image. Now, I want to describe my experience and provide my recommendations on how to produce quality images. This is what I use as my magic formula to create my art. First, pick an art style that does not need a lot of detail. In the situation where one of my books uh, is full of fruits, that is the perfect book for getting started. And that's the book I got started with. 
example, I picked a layered. So in this book, I picked a layered paper style. And in the other, I picked an illustration style. Obviously, I don't need photorealistic uh, details for either of these art pieces. Do not pick photorealistic or very detailed character pieces that will derail your journey real fast. Secondly, try to separate your image into background and foreground and characters. What this allows you to do is produce consistent background images and separate character images. To do more than one character or more than one kind of detail, like the background and foreground together in a picture, they struggle a little bit. So separating the background and the characters is very important. For example, in my books, I wanted to create a burning city as a background with robots in it. The first thing I did was to generate the city by itself. This allowed me to get a lot more background images of the burning city, fine tune that. Since the AI did not have to account for robots or characters, it gave me very consistent results. Then I created the robots and the foreground part of it separately. Create your foreground and character images separately. I will talk about how you can put all of these together in the below sections in my article and also in the video upcoming video. Try to use parameters for everything. Parameters like aspect ratio, stylize, etc. greatly enhance your experience. If you're using the DALI engine, use the image editor to its most potent capacity. I have found that using it had changed my perception on how to do good illustrations. I have put all of this together in a cheat sheet that you can get down in my description and up here. This cheat sheet will talk about all the things I just talked about on how to produce consistent and good results. Let's compare Mid Journey versus Dali. In my experience, I ended up using Dali for more artistic work. It was really good at producing art type images that looked like art and not computer generated. It did struggle with detail though. Mid Journey, on the other hand, was able to generate good detailed illustrations and images, but you could easily tell that it was a digital type of art or AI generated. It lacked the finesse and layering that real art would have. And I felt in those cases, Dali did much better. So the answer is you want to pick the tool that you feel is right for the art style that you're trying to create. If you're trying to create a more artistic style, like I was with my book about uh, the feelings garden, where I was using the layered paper style, I think Mid Journey works really well. If I was trying to use and create a book about illustrations and children's book like my math squad, I would use Mid Journey because it gives me a little more detail and so on and so forth. So honestly, the right answer is whatever suits the art style that you would like to have. I did find Dali's image editor to be superbly helpful. So if you're looking for something that's really easy to get started, good artistic style and has a very good web interface image editor, go for Dali. And uh, another note for folks trying to use Midjourney, it is available as a Discord kind of um, app. Um, I would spring for the uh, priced version of it so that you could get it as a private chat in Discord and not have to go through the public chat. So. It is something of a learning curve compared to Dali. So that's something to keep in mind. Right. Let's summarize our illustration process. Now that we've compared the tools, we've picked the tools and so on and so forth, let's summarize the whole process and see where we are. And what you wanna do for the very first instance is to pick the style of the art and the audience you're aiming at. This is important because this drives tool selection, it drives what kind of art you want to do, and so on and so forth. Now, once you have that, do your storyboard. Storyboard your book with your scenes, your pages, etc. It will give you an idea of what you need to prompt the image generator for. For storyboards, you can either use sketches or you could use texts, because now that you have a text to image generator, you could just use texts for your storyboard. 
Once you have that, split your art into background and character, set aspect ratios for all of these things. So if there's a page that contains a big background, understand that the aspect ratio should be like two, three is to two kind of aspect ratio figures. So all of that stuff, like you gotta lay it out and kind of visualize it. So once you have that, go ahead and start prompting because this is the longest part of the journey and you will be prompting a lot. So once you prompt the image generators, you will get your starter images. You can edit those images on your own. You could use tools like Photoshop, etc., or you could um, uh, use tools like Procreate, Canva, etc., and so on and so forth. Mm. I use Sketchbook on my Android. Um, and once you do the editing, you can also hire, if, you, if you're not comfortable with doing the edits, you can also hire people on Fiverr and Upwork. Once you finish with that, if you're satisfied with the quality of the results, you would then go to the next step. If not, you would iteratively prompt, use the images to prompt newer images, or use the images, make the edits in the image editor and kind of add images to it. So you do all of that, get the quality content that you want. Once you have it, you put it together. And the putting it together process is the next process. Um, and the putting it together process is also where we are gonna look at different tools for that. Um, you also wanna do a third party review and editing. Um, uh, uh, you could use your friends, you could use Fiverr, Upwork, anything you want at this point of time to make sure your work meets the quality of standards that you may not see, but someone else could see it and update you. All right, awesome. So now that you've finished that, let's move on to our next part of our journey, the putting it together piece.